Our curiosity had to wait for the moment. The obligations of hospitality must be observed. And they were. And now we would hear the story of the people of Best who had paid homage to an American soldier as told by Mr. Ophi. In 1954, Mr. Vitebrew, the newspaper editor here, was searching for a story to commemorate the 10th anniversary of our liberation. His paper was the Bata Kori, the house organ of the famous shoe factory. He found his story when he read the book Rendezvous with Destiny, the official history of the American 101st Airborne Division. He learned in detail what Joe Mann had done for us here in Best. When he wrote his story for his paper, he suggested that the people of Best consider the creation of a permanent memorial for this great American soldier. When he sent it to the print shop to be put into type, he had little idea of what would happen. He expected a reaction. He didn't expect a sensation, for that's what occurred when the story came off the presses. The story spread like wildfire. First in the factory where hundreds of Bata employees read it in the paper. Messengers carried the paper to other factories. And postmen distributed the courier to subscribers throughout the town and countryside of Best. Everyone heard of the story. It was read by housewives, by mechanics, and gasoline station attendants, by dentists and their patients. By barbers, their customers. By women in beauty parlors and butchers, bartenders, and businessmen all over. The reaction grew into tremendous enthusiasm. Friends called friends and telephoned the town hall directly. Hundreds wrote letters. Many, many letters. The city fathers, in response to the public sentiment, took action. A committee was promptly formed by Dr. Nottermans, the mayor of Best. Editor Vitterbrood was on it, of course. I was a member, and many leading citizens of the town. This was the first of many meetings. We worked out a plan to honor your soldier by building a statue and an open-air theater in his memory and by forming a Joe Man Club for the children. Mayor Nottermans dictated a letter to your government asking for permission to use the name of Joe Man and the Screaming Eagle patch of the 101st Airborne Division and sent the request to the United States Embassy at The Hague. The request went to your Pentagon in Washington. There it was reviewed by the authorities of the United States Army and forwarded for the necessary endorsements. It went very quickly through the channels. And was sent back to us with full approval in a letter from the Embassy. It was a pleasant moment for the members of the committee to hear that your government wished us every success. While we had waited, we had been busy planning the ways to raise the money and considering different designs for the memorial. Now we knew we could go ahead. We had decided to carve a symbolic statue in the image of a pelican, for in European mythology, the 
pelican is revered for acts of self-sacrifice to preserve the life of its young. It was an unusual idea perhaps, but one we felt appropriate and symbolic. The mayor had also received a special letter fully endorsing our ideas from a very important American who had been Joe Mann's commanding general, Maxwell D. Taylor, who was at this time the chief of staff of the United States Army. In September 1956, the statue and open-air theater were ready. Many people came to the dedication. Most of them were from Best, but others came from Eindhoven, a nearby town that had been liberated by the American 101st Airborne Division. Still others came from all over Holland. The 101st sent representatives, the honor soldiers of the division. And Joe Mann's parents were flown to Holland by the United States Army. It was a fitting tribute to an American soldier. Mayor Nazermans made the dedication speech and Colonel McCaffrey, the military attaché from the American Embassy, delivered the eulogy. Then Mr. and Mrs. Mann unveiled the statue to their son. I believe that in that moment, many people recalled one line from St. John in the Bible. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Dr. Nottermans, the mayor of Best, came into the office as the town secretary finished. He'd been told of our visit, and he'd come to express his thanks for our taking the time to hear what the people of Best had done. He asked us if we would care to accompany him to the Memorial Park. The park was located on the outskirts of the town, where the children's groups could easily reach it. The statue was simple, yet striking. Seeing it now after hearing so much about it, I could understand its symbolism. For the pelican, in times of hunger, is known to tear strips from its own breast to feed its young. I realize now that this statue did not so much salute the person of Joe Mann, but rather the heroic qualities that made him a hero. And through him, the people were paying tribute to all American soldiers who had fallen far from home so that Holland and other countries could again be free. While we watched, the children began to fill the theater. Mayor Nottermans told us that the parents of these children had created this memorial through their contributions. This was their way of telling their children that honor and courage must be revered if freedom is to prevail. It is hard to remain fully conscious, however, of the solemnity 
while watching the joyous faces of the children. Like children everywhere, they live for today, and today was to be one of fun. Mayor Nuttermans had to return to his office, but we decided to stay for the performance. We thanked the mayor for his courtesy and expressed our appreciation to the people of his town. It didn't surprise us to see Marika and Stephen with the children. They had a big hello for us and were as eager as ever to be helpful. They even offered to translate the show for us, which we gratefully accepted. The first part of the program was an old favorite of all children, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. We didn't need a translation to follow that story. It was a reminder to us of how universal fairy tales are. As a matter of fact, they originated in Europe. Next, a puppet show, a Punch and Judy affair. It was lots of fun. But it was more fun to watch the kids who put on a show of their own. Watching them, it seemed to me that Joe Mann couldn't have asked for a more wonderful way to be remembered than by these youngsters, who in time to come would think back to the happy times spent in the Joe Mann Memorial Theater. Like all good things, they end too soon. We had to move on for the time was late and our leave nearly over. The unusual story of Joe Mann had brought us new friends and a new insight into the feelings of a fine people. I couldn't help feeling that U.S. Army paratrooper Joe Mann, looking down from the Valhalla of great fighting men, must be very proud. <laughs>